If you want to get strong, build muscle and get flexible, then progressive overload is essential. It is a process where you will never plateau. Every single workout, you will always be doing a little bit more than you did in the last workout. But before you even consider progressive overload, we really need to optimize your technique. Here's some tips and tricks that I use for our Unity Gym online personal training tribe that I think might really help you. What's up team? I'm doing this video because I just did our quarterly coaching video for our advanced students who just finished the five by five challenge. And there's a couple of concepts that I was saying to a lot of them that I think are gonna really benefit all of you. And I'm gonna be talking about progressive overload, how to use it, when to use it, when to recognize when you can use it, and also how it applies to beginners in their first three phases. So if you're in your first, regardless of how long you've been training, maybe I shouldn't say beginners, people that are new to the UMS and people that are beyond phase three. So for those of you that are in phase three, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt because the number one thing that you should be focusing on, sorry, those of you that are in phase one to three is technique optimization. If you haven't mastered the technique for the fundamental lifts, so bench press, bent over row, shoulder press, pull up, squat, deadlift, and split squat, those are the fundamental lifts. If your technique isn't dialed in for those, then all of this is second. Because a big mistake that people make is that they try to apply progressive overload before they've mastered the technique and that's how they injure themselves. So if you're in those earlier phases, you should really be focusing on dialing in that technique. And don't think of filming yourself as only for me, that's something that you submit to me when you have, uh, when you need coaching. It's a really good idea to film yourself just for you. I film myself a lot just so that I can look at it. Because, you know, if you've been told by me, uh, I was going to say by your coach, but, you know, I'm your guy's coach. So if you've been told by your coach that you need to keep your shoulders down when you do a, a shoulder press, you can film yourself and you can, once you know what it looks like and what it, uh, to have your shoulders down, if you start seeing yourself go like this in your own video, you don't need a coach to look at that and say, oh, you need to keep your shoulders down. You're now in a position that you can look at it and say, oh, my shoulders are coming up. And it's a really valuable feedback loop. It's actually a, a, a really um, powerful tool that I never had when I was training when I was in my 20s. When I was in my 20s, my, I, I did Kung Fu and my Kung Fu Sifu or teacher used to say to me, oh, it's really valuable to film yourself. You can see how you're doing and blah, blah, blah. But back then you had to have a video camera. You know, you had to go and get a video camera and film yourself. So we've all got these phones and we can film ourselves whenever we want. So that's a really good thing when you're learning the technique. You know, you watch the tutorial. The, actually, I'll, I'll move on to the second thing now. Second point is that when you're trying to master the technique, it's really good to watch the tutorial videos, at least for the fundamental lifts. So for those two primary exercises in each of the workout that you do. So in a bent arm strength workout, it's the shoulder press and the pull up or in the horizontal push pull, it's the bench press and the bent over row. You wanna watch those exercise tutorials once a week and it's really good to watch it just before you do your workout. So if you travel to the gym on public transport, watch those tutorial videos when you're on the public transport. If you don't, maybe watch them in the morning when you're having breakfast or watch them the night before, before you go to bed. Because there's a lot of good data that shows us that the more we see something, the more we hear something, the more we retain the information. You'll watch a tutorial video and you'll, and you'll nod and you'll go, yeah, right. But then when it's time to execute it, you'll only remember 5% of what you watched. So it's really a really good idea to re-watch those videos over and over again. For me to get to where I am with my training, I have watched videos, honest to God, of one exercise, sometimes over a hundred times. I've just watched it over and over again. And then when I'm you know, hitting a plateau and I'm not going through, that's when I'll watch, I'll even watch it multiple times in one workout. I'll watch it between sets you know, to really remind myself of what I'm trying to do. So once you move out of that technique optimization phase, then we start really using progressive overload. And progressive overload, once you've dialed in the technique, what we're looking for is, um, and this is, again, this, this is if you don't have injury as well. If you've got an injury, that's a, it's a different um, kettle of fish. You know, we're looking at different ways of progressing. But if you don't have an injury and you've dialed in your technique, then we want to really look for progressive overload. And progressive overload is something you do in every single workout. So you're either looking for an extra rep in one or two sets, or you're looking for a little bit more weight in one or two sets, or the same thing in all sets. So if you're doing a program that says, 
you know, eight reps and you're aiming and you're doing eight reps and you get eight reps for all five sets, then in the next workout, try to increase the weight by two to 3%. So that might seem tiny. You might think, well, I'm doing a 50 kilogram, you know, chest press and to increase by two or 3%, that's not even um, five kilos, you know, uh, sorry. What am, I, what am I saying here? 10% would be five kilos. Yeah, so you know we're looking at like one kilogram or, or, or one and a half kilograms. Uh, if you're in the States, I'm talking two pounds here. So this is where these, um, I, I know a lot of gyms don't have these, but I have um, what's called change plates. That's one kilogram or two pounds, but I've got half a kilogram or one pound. I've got one and a half kilograms, two kilograms and two and a half kilograms. And you know, you could, you could get yourself a, a set of half kilo and one kilo weight plates. Most gyms have two and a half kilos. And if you just bring those to the gym with you, and then you can really be using progressive overload in every workout, because you might think two, two or 3%, what's the point of that? But imagine you did that every week. Imagine every week, every single week, you went up by two to 3%. In 10 weeks, you would have gone up, let's round it off, 25%. So you've gone from a 50 kilo chest press that felt really hard, and then in 10 weeks later, you're now doing, um, what are we doing? Uh, you're now doing 60, 62 and a half kilos, something like that. That's huge, that's a huge improvement. And the way that that would add up over 20 weeks, now all of a sudden we're, you know, we're in June now, right? It's, we're halfway through the year. If, imagine you were doing that for the previous six months. And that 50 kilogram chest press is now 75 kilograms. And then by the end of the year, we're looking at maybe doing a 100 kilogram chest press and you've now doubled your strength in one year. That's how progressive overload works. And then the same thing happens with calisthenics with reps. It's, um, you know, you're, you're looking at trying to do that one extra rep in one set in every workout. And this is why it is so important to track your reps and your weight in the app. It is so, so important because there's this little feature where when I go into my app and I go to start my workout and I have a look at what I'm doing today and I can go, I can look at whatever exercise I'm doing. So this is once I've, I'll try and get my phone to focus here. Once I've started the workout and there's that little button there. If I press that button, I'm trying to look in the screen. So I press that uh, little tick with the circle around it. It brings up all my previous workouts and I can see exactly what I did last time, okay? And then I can say, okay, well, I did all four sets at 25 kilograms for eight reps and I did that last workout as well. Time to go up to 27 and a half kilograms, okay? It's very, very important that you track your progress and use progressive overload. So this is more advanced stuff, of course, for those of you that are newer, focus on technique, you've got to dial in the technique. And there's times where even for the more advanced students, you'll need to re go back and relearn a technique and, and dial it in to be able to break through a plateau. So I hope that helps. If you've got any questions, let me know.